is this what is this moment for you and what are you what are you learning from what your clients need right now sure i appreciate it so thank you we have been busy i would say the moment for me is has changed it's gone to one of determination uh as renee has said earlier i realized that for most of my career and zinga talked about this as well i had put aside my blackness even though i was focused on diversity and inclusion right it made others and i wore the mask as paul lawrence dunbar said every day i came into work and i wore the mask that you know grand and lie. Uh, and I realized that at some point, if I'm really going to be effective and genuine, I have to put away that mask and no longer wear it. And I have to help my colleagues and my, my clients realize that I wear the mask. And many of their, uh, those who they interact with was wearing the mask. So we have to realize that um, a number of, uh, I recognize that and to be really effective and to actually, you know, provide empathy and grace for my colleagues, right, to show up uh, uh, genuinely, I have to be genuine. And I think, so one of the work we have done uh, that we've seen is, and I'm encouraged by now, is that I think organizations recognize that across the, across the spectrum, right? Not just consumer, not just financial services. One of the things that's happened in the midst of this uh, pandemic is, you know, leaders and organizations recognize that you can't ask your employees, your colleagues to separate who they are from where they work, because you're coming into that living room every day, into their bedrooms, into their offices. So you can't ask them to separate who they are. And if you really, 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 really want to actually get the value that they bring, you have to foster and drive inclusion. So I'm encouraged by that because I think more organizations have actually recognized that. They started to recognize that there's a gap between just saying we're diverse and creating a diverse culture. And they're getting really intentional about how do you, one, develop the roadmap, the strategy around diversity? How do you link that to, I, I want to use the term, your, you know, just business, but how do you link that to your overall talent stretch to where the organization is going, right? And quite frankly, they're getting comfortable measuring it, right? So we're being very intentional about measuring our impact. And I see the clients are being very intentional about measuring that as well. All you have to do that all while building a, a, a culture of inclusion, which includes helping your leaders be inclusive leaders. Right? When we think about developing leaders, we talk about all everything around sales and strategy. Uh, now we're talking about purpose, but you also have to help them lead inclusively, which means you have to be very intentional about that development, that training. And if I'm encouraged again, it's because we're seeing organizations at different places in the journey across different sectors globally, literally, right? They are literally talking about black social justice in the UK, right? <laughs> uh, uh, in Canada, right? Uh, in Latin America, in Brazil, for the first time, who never said that they had any issues around race, even though we know they did. Literally talking about what is it we need to do. Uh, and we're working with those organizations around the world in all those countries. So I'm encouraged by that. How do you operationalize something like that, like self-reflection? You have to prepare leaders to lead. Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go back to 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 to, to Werner's one of. Vinay's comments earlier, actually in one of our articles, you know, you have to help leaders and organizations move from being well-intentional, well-intentioned to be intentional, which means you actually have to have a framework for the discussion. As Zinga talked about, you have to define what are the metrics you're looking at and help them understand why. You, as Ken said, you have to meet them where they are. And we said you have to think broadly about all of the all of the employees, recognize who the right people are to be in the right place. And then you actually have a very specific plan to help them prepare those leaders to lead authentically and genuinely, right? Which means how knowing their numbers, knowing where their strategy and where they're trying to go and actually facilitating sessions for them actually to practice articulating that, right? Both to, to, the, to, their, to their working group, right? To, uh, to, to, the, to their executive team, to their board and then broader, uh, to their broader community. We actually have a number of clients we've worked with actually, we literally do that. We play back, here is, here, here is what you're saying, and here's how you're showing up, right? And then over time, letting them see how they might have changed, right? And Ken said, we have to provide grace and give them a safe space, right? Because they're not always gonna say the right thing. They're not always gonna do it, right? It is a new language, it is a new way of engaging, right, with, with, with employees. And by the way, I don't think it's gonna change. Right. I mean, you know, we have a whole generation now that's coming up where, you know, like Andy, so we won't say how long we've been doing this, but literally, um, you know, somebody graduating college now feels very comfortable emailing, you know, the CEO or the chairman to say, hey, here's <laughs> what's going on with our company. Right. When I came up, <laughs> we didn't do that. Right. And so really, we have to actually prepare those leaders to say this is not going to change. Right. You have to be very cognizant that everyone is looking at us. They're looking at our board, they're looking at you, they're looking at the results, and they're going to hold us accountable 